Someday, I'm gonna make great machines that fly. And me and my friends are gonna go flying together into the forever and beautiful sky. Quill, you gotta hurry! I look around at us, you know what I see? Losers. When I first came on to play Peter Quill, AKA Star-Lord, the Guardians of the Galaxy were like, you know, this ragtag squad of nobodies. They, everyone thought that they were scraping the bottom of the IP barrel. Whoa! Oh my God. Quills, this is basically Gamora's. It was sort of a lesser known comic within the Marvel world. I remember we all went to Comic Con and showed a little footage from the first Guardians and the whole audience kind of watching it, digesting something new. That's what it felt like. The footage we were able to show I think it I think people really liked it. And so I'm hoping that I'm hoping that we can continue to make great stuff out here and that we, we turn out a movie that you know that people like because we're all we're all working really hard. It was an incredibly original tone for a superhero movie. I can't believe you had that in your purse! It's not a purse, it's a knapsack. Tonal shifts have been a part of this franchise from the beginning from when we start with young peter quill losing his mother and screaming crying going out there's a spaceship oh my gosh it's science fiction and then we come to him dancing through a temple playing and singing so it was important for me to allow the humor and the characters to be funny what are you doing dance off bro me and you but it was also allowing the emotion to really play out and not be afraid of it not be ashamed of that emotion I think there's more of a connection because I think the Guardians are so imperfect. And their paths are not squeaky clean. And they've done things that they're not super proud of, but they've tried to make up for those things. And I think that's, you know, something that everybody <laughs> can relate to. There's just a true, genuine kind of family love, a chosen family love. Doing Guardians, everybody always comes to work with the same level of excitement since day one. You know? <laughs> Please, let's shoot. We're rooting for each other. We are very much committed and very loyal and devoted to James' vision. And he establishes such a beautiful environment of friendship and creativity, but also passion. You know, he reminds us always about the discipline that we have to have for what we really believe in. And he really believes in this story and he really believes in and, um, and what he's creating and what he's directing. Why would you risk your life for this? My mother gave it to me. The first movie is a story of the mother. Back on the Milano, home sweet home. The second film is a story of the father. He may have been your father, boy, but he wasn't your daddy. I'm damn lucky you're my boy. And this film is a story of the self. So it's innately more intimate because of that. Everyone around me dies, my mother, Yondu, Gamora. I did feel like this movie is really me, you know? And Marvel was great in that they trusted me to be me, like they always have. But I pushed it a little bit further, I think. It's really about all of these characters putting trauma behind them to become their best selves. And what James has done with volume three brings everything full circle. You know, I'm still not who you want me to be. I know. But who you are ain't so bad. The Guardians themselves each need to fulfill their own lives in a way that requires them to be separate from one another. So the third movie is Quill learning to be OK on his own. My mother died in front of me when I was eight years old, and I have been running ever since. I'm going to need to take some time. I think Chris is so good in the movie. What do we know about where a rocket came from? Nothing. He won't talk about it. He's so emotionally raw and vulnerable. And that's one of the things I always liked about Chris Pratt was his ability to be this kind of big, charming guy, but also to be really vulnerable. You were everything to me. Chris is such an amazing energy to have on set. What are you doing? Oh, let's start again, start again. He's a perfect number one on the call sheet, meaning that person usually sets the tone and it trickles down. 
Zoe's arc as Gamora is one of the most interesting arcs in the whole MCU, and her arc as Zoe Saldana through the course of the three films is also really extraordinary. She's always been fantastic. She's even more present, more focused than I've ever seen her. She's <laughs> unrelenting. We need your hand. And it's your choice whether it's on your body or not. What are you doing? She was never going to fall for that. I do find this Gamora very exciting, you know, because she's very independent and she's really wild. That was take six. <laughs> There's a spunk to her that, you know, Gamora never really had. You know what? I don't care. Just drop me off with the Ravagers and you go do whatever it is that you want to do. So her coming back is definitely thrilling. Drax, the destroyer. Throughout the films, Drax has to let go of all of his anger and all of his rage. You weren't born to be a destroyer. You were born to be a dad. Now he's found a new love in his new family, and I think he really just wants to enjoy life and get through life and help people along the way. I can't imagine anyone else playing Drax. It's totally Dave. It has been Dave since the moment he walked in and he and I screen tested together. Like, everybody knew it was going to be Dave. Sad. Just anything, right? If we flow into the dialogue, that's fine? Go into flow, yeah. Wrong here. I'm just gonna stand here and growl at you. Okay. Brr. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looks scary. He has this like quiet, calm energy resonating from this gigantic body, and there's something so interesting about that. <laughs> and also, James Gunn like laughs every single time Dave will deliver a line as Drax. <laughs> you just hear him at the monitor laughing his head off. Damn it! Mantis, why don't you ever think? Are we pretending to be angry again? Mantis, you asshole! <laughs> With Nebula, even from the beginning, it was clear that she wasn't just a stoic villain. She was deeply disturbed and hurt by her upbringing. I just wanted a sister! And now I get to explore this version of the character that is sort of healing and becoming the person that she was meant to be. It's been beautiful to watch that transformation, but also Nebula and Karen could not be any more different from each other. And that's just a testament on how just greatly she transforms and becomes this other entity. That's ridiculous. Do not bring me into this. Don't even. <laughs> Knock it off! What? We needed a soft place to lie down. I didn't say anything. Totally different person. Her look, her spirit, her voice completely changes. She's bad to the bone. I mean, she is incredible. <laughs> I love you all. I do. But my whole life, I did whatever ego wanted. And then I did whatever the gardens wanted. I need to go out and discover what I want. This third Guardians of the Galaxy, there is much more of Mantis. And she's been around people much more too, because in the second one, she's very awkward and not really knowing what to do and how to behave. And now it's less of a softer character. You know, for me, it brings a lot of funny moments as well. What she does with this character is, is so fun. And she has such a sweet innocence about her. But also, she can be a, a sarcastic little shit. <laughs> Welcome home, Peter. I'm very honored that Kragwin was able to have this small role in the first movie and then expand it as an arc. And I think that that is really one of James's biggest strengths, is that there's no character that is cast aside or is just fodder. Every character fits into the construct of the whole creative piece. Sean is a wonderful Kraglin, but also Sean really goes completely out of his way to deliver a heartfelt and strong and convincing rocket while we're shooting that we're able to bounce off of him. There's a whole community of people that made this great, iconic, cinematic character. <laughs> They were not looking at you funny. You got anger issues. Mature yourself! From Bradley Cooper, who does like this unbelievable job voicing the character, and to my brother James, who writes the character, and then the whole special effects team. It's a fascinating process. 
James Gunn handpicks each and every actor for each and every one of his characters. I am Groot. And Vin Diesel, for that matter, playing Groot was exactly what he was envisioning. We are Groot. Vin is one of a kind. His voice is a, such a strong component to his presence. Your natural voice. I am Groot. I love each and every one of these actors. It's kind of like a match made in heaven. I looked around the other day and was just like, how did they find us all? It does feel like lightning in a ball, actually. It's rare to have a rapport like we have, as many years as we've put in the trenches together. Still very much a family, just like the story, really. And it's hard to even put into words. Thank you. Thank you, guys, each and every one of you. I, I really mean it. Uh, you're the best fans in the world, and I'll, I'll forever be grateful.